Hey, welcome everybody to season two of the Seven Minutes to Better Selling podcast. I'm your host, Colin Lake. He has 25 years of sales and marketing experience. Um, so, Matt, Matthew, I am thrilled that we're spending some time together. And in particular, like with your background and how you get to where you are, all of that stuff seems like it's a really, really good connection point. So, welcome. Thank you, Colin. I really appreciate the opportunity to spend time with you and your team. Um, uh, and if your listeners don't know, happy birthday to you. I, I understand today's your birthday, so uh, congratulations. Um, looking forward to uh, digging into the topic. Yeah, that's great. All right, so Matthew, let me ask you this. How do you get to, like so you spent a lot of time selling. Yes. Um, you're, you've got a major role for a major organization that does great things for other organizations. So how do you get to where you are today? I'd love to tell you it's a very conventional straight path, but uh, it's been anything but that for sure. Um, you know, I did not graduate college in what I would consider to be a sales you know, type pathway or a technology pathway. But over the past 25 years, I've kind of ingrained uh, myself into you know, that role and function um, not only as a doer, but over time, getting into a leadership capacity where I'm helping to educate and uh, develop the growth of salespeople in our organization. Um, so it, it started out completely outside of technology. I had worked in advertising, did a couple of years there, worked in New York, came back, got into selling advertising. And through selling advertising for the local Philadelphia Inquirer, was, got introduced to a technology staffing firm I was selling to. They flipped tables and offered me a job and I was interested. And it's kind of like wildfire from there. Um, I spent a lot of time in uh, solution selling and then have kind of promoted myself through. Uh, the You brought up a great topic in your introduction about loving what you do versus doing what you do. Um, and in sales, I find that, um, you know, we're a little bipolar sometimes. And I don't mean that in a negative way, just, you know, we love the job when it's going well. And, you know, we hate the job when it's not going mm. well. Awesome. Great description. Great layout. Let me ask you this. Were you always a people person? Like, is that, is that like how you grew up in life? You always loved that communication piece? I don't know that I, it, it was smart enough at the time younger to realize it, but a lot of people used to tell me I'd either be a lawyer or a salesperson. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, I, I I think my emotional intelligence is higher than my real intelligence. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> like lawyer that. just wasn't going to work. So I look at it from a um, a win win situation, right? I mean, at the end of the day, right. you're either win lose or win win. Win lose situations for salespeople are are just awful to be involved in, um, because your client sees you as a commodity, not as a solutions provider. Now, in some businesses, it's a commodity driven business, but even in those commodity driven businesses, there are benefits and features that each company offers to their customers that help differentiate them from their competitors. And I think being able to understand where those features and benefits really pull on the heartstrings of your client or your, your, your customer, that's what's going to enable you to understand how to best help them. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. So you, you've mentioned this a couple of times, a couple of different ways. Um, you, you said you have a punch list of questions you ask. Yes. Um, are your clients um, always willing to answer those questions? Like, like sometimes a salesperson comes in and says, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions to figure out what your problems are so I can solve them. In other words, I'm going to give you my product that solves every problem you have, no matter what you are. Right. The old, you know, every, um, I'm a hammer and everything looks like a nail. Right. Like, do, do, they, do they answer those questions or do you think you have a special sauce that, that enables them to ask that, excuse me, answer those questions? That's a really good question. And I would be lying to you if I told you every customer gave me every piece of information I ever wanted every time I ask it. That's not true. Yeah, right. Um, there are certain assumptions that I'm making because I do my research. So most of the companies have a website, some sort of public data. They uh, post out their most recent news. So those are the types of things as, you know, your traditional uh, brass tacks as a sales professional that you should be doing for every customer engagement. You know, find out what is the situation that they're dealing with. Um, I truly go in and tell them, listen, I don't have any intention of you buying today or buying ever, but I'm interested in learning what your challenges are. I'm a heavily connected individual in this space, not only for what I provide in software development and uh, IT consulting, but I am connected with other individuals because of my networking efforts that if I don't provide the solution, I know somebody that will. Yeah, that's great. W one thing I want to make sure does not get lost in, in that thought that you shared is the research. 
like if, if yeah, like this solution selling thing is is a well discussed, well thought through conversation. Like ask sure. lots of questions that helps identify problems. Once you identify problems and you can offer solutions, that's been discussed. But if you do the research coming into it, then your questions can be more pointed and more sincere. So, so I love that. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to, we're, we're getting um, long in a tooth here for, for our, our short calls. Um, so um, in terms of wrap up, this will be, the, be your, be your ending thought for, for the folks today. So one of the hardest people to sell is ourselves. In other words, we got to convince ourselves to go do something at a really high level or a higher level than everyone else who's selling the stuff that we have is. So how, how do you do that? Or how do you suggest the people that you lead to, to do that? To their That's best. a great question. Yeah, uh, eliminate the fear in your mind. Everything that you that that is an emotion that is an obstacle to executing on an action is self manufactured in your own mind. Um, when you start to look at it from a uh, a lens of the person or persons you're selling to are humans, they have the same challenges daily that you do. I, I like to use the um, example of a young sales person. I can't call the CIO, chief information officer. That person knows so much more than I do, and and, and I'm like. Sure, they've built a career. They've done that. And, and, and you rightfully should respect that. But that doesn't mean that you can't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them to pitch what your opportunity or your solution is. For young salespeople or salespeople or people transitioning into sales, just remember, you know, most people buy just like you buy. Even though it's not their money, they do protect that budget because it's their responsibility. They're accountable for how that, bu that budget's spent. So they need to have the, the valid information to make sure that that's a good decision. But also too is customers are looking for value and value may be a discount or it may be um, other services that are surrounding your initial solution, but you really need to dig in and ask those questions about what's important to you. Um, we call it with them. Yeah, it's great. Um, I forget, it's one of the, um philosophers who said it you know what like a aristotle or something like that like a, a real big one is um we um experience like 90 percent of the fear in our minds for in sure. other words 90 percent of the fear lives here not not in actuality mm -hmm. so so it's a great thought and, and a couple of great takeaways so matthew thank you so much for joining us thanks so much mm -hmm. for spending time and thanks for sharing like i have four or five big takeaways which we do a recap call so you'll, you'll get brought up again on some of these things so you've done a great job and we're grateful for it so good selling thank everyone you. really appreciate it have a great day